of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Chairman, could we have a moment of silence for our departed, retired manager, Eddie Phillips, who passed away on October the 8th? Yes, we can. Should we all stand? And yes. Have a moment of silence. Last time, uh, uh, I didn't know Mr. Phillips. Can you give us a brief history? Yes, I'd love to. Eddie, I don't know how many years Eddie did work in the DPW, but Eddie was a manager for 23 years. He's been retired 23 years. And Eddie was the person that a lot of people on this island can thank, because he's the one that got the 24-inch water main on the girl's heel. And he worked with a... Uh, MDEQ engineer by the name of Richard Sachs. And uh, they put a moratorium on building here back in the early 80s, and this is how we ended up getting that 24 inch main. And he was with the Public Works Department? He was the manager of the Public Works Department from August 1970 until he retired in 1993. And that's when I came on full time. Uh, in August 1970. Yeah. I, I actually believe he started uh, started in 61, uh, if I remember from last night's meeting. So he had 33 years. Okay, well, <clears throat> thanks for uh, letting us know, Les. Uh, now we'll, we'll call the roll. Everybody's here, so we have full attendance tonight. Um, and uh, next item is approval of the agenda. I have a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve the agenda as stated. Second. Move and support it. Uh, approve the agenda. Any discussion, questions? If not, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The agenda is approved. We have the minutes of our September 9th meeting before us. You've all had a chance to look at them. <clears throat> I said we're unanimous with them. That's what I didn't call them. Um, so we have the uh, minutes of our September 9th meeting. I have a motion to approve. Uh, not noting any changes, I would uh, make a motion to approve the minutes of our regular meeting September 9th, 2014. We have support. Support. And I'll that wasn't there. Okay. <coughs> any uh, questions? Comments? If not, all in favor to keep by saying aye. 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 <coughs> Minutes are approved. You have uh, item number six, our approval of bills and vouchers, pages six to 11. Any questions on those? If none, I'd entertain a motion to approve the vouchers. Make a motion to approve the bills uh, or vouchers from 13303 to 13309. Any questions? If not, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, vouchers are approved. Next is item seven, review of our revenues and expenditures, which is the financial report for water, sewer, refuse, or other funds uh, to date. If there are no questions, we'll receive and file that report. And finally, we have the treasurer's report. We have a motion to accept the treasurer's report. And I make a motion to approve the treasurer, treasurer's report for September 2014. Support? Is there support? support? Move and support of the treasurer's report for September be accepted as distributed. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Should have asked if there were any questions. I guess there weren't. <clears throat> the only thing I'd note in the bottom of, on the second page 18 of the report that the road fund, and of course this is after we've done this year's improvement program, is down $166,000. All right, with that, we'll move on to an update on the, uh, on the manager's report. And our manager, Lorinda Benito, is uh, off with the flu. And so we hope uh, Lorinda gets well, uh, recovers soon, if not tomorrow, the next day. In her place, we have John Kime. John, thanks for being here. 
Uh, on the elevator, uh, I'll give the update on the elevator report. When I got in here uh, tonight, John handed me an updated email from Lorinda. And um, <clears throat> this week, our uh, engineers asked the contractor, Lardner, if they would, uh, well, i got to get back up a little bit. Uh, since our last meeting, when we talked about the elevator at the wastewater treatment plant, the, um, as you know, the, the inspector from the state said we needed to spend an extra $5,000 uh, for additional equipment, um, air handling equipment, is that correct, Ted? Air handling equipment, uh, in the elevator shaft. Uh, we didn't think we needed to, uh, so we challenged it and asked him for uh, a, a letter which would stipulate the specific uh, uh, violation or, or state statute that would require that. And said so he wouldn't give it, the, the township manager asked for that. He responded by sending him a copy of the state code, highlighted. Uh, in the evaluation that took place following that, and you can speak of this, Ted, a little more if you need to, uh, I went to, there was still a feeling we didn't need to do this. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Well, I, uh, if you can read in the state code, it said we have to maintain certain temperature conditions, which are 14 to 130, with mechanical or uh, some kind of ventilation. We have a ventilator on the roof. I, there's no way that that being in the elevator shaft that we're going to exceed the manufacturer's conditions. So to put mechanical cooling or heating in that place is not needed. But he's probably going to stand on this and we'll probably have to challenge it further. All right, so what transpired is the Rains Engineering uh, met with the contractor and the contractor said he would file a complaint with the inspector's superior at the state of Michigan in the um, elevator division about the way this is being handled. And the comment I have that was given to me tonight says, this is uh, from uh, Lardner. It said, we spoke with Mr. Calvin Rogler, Chief Elevator Inspector with the State of Michigan. What he requires is a letter from an environmental industry professional, the consulting engineer, stating that the current existing environment is in compliance with the manufacturer's specifications. The main concern is the possibility of condensation if in the future there are telltale signs of condensation. They will require the problem be resolved, and the elevator may be placed out of service. So that's the status of it, and uh, hopefully this matter can be resolved shortly. So uh, essentially, we've gone over the inspector's head, and uh, hopefully we'll get a waiver on that requirement. That was a $5,000 item. At least. Called. Yeah. So any questions on that? Joe, do you want to speak to that? I've got nothing to add. Okay. That's the status of the elevator at the wastewater plant. Next item is the Loma Circle Drainage Project. Mr. and Mrs. Albright are here. Um, you could come to the podium and said you have a question. While you're doing that, I left you a message. You have to come to the podium. Um, I left you a message uh, before this meeting tonight that the latest update as of today is the contractor has all of his... Uh, uh, documents in as insurance and bonds uh, as of today. They're going to schedule a pre-construction meeting with him later this week and he'll give us a schedule. And his intent still is to have it done by the end of the month. Okay, yeah, we're, we're hoping to uh, make this a priority project. Obviously, we go through a lot of uh, anxiety and a lot of issues when we see these type of rain events. I mean, a week ago they said we we're going to get two to three inches of rain today. Uh, which would be catastrophic for us, even the pumps wouldn't keep up with that. So we watch weather every single day, and it's just, it's unbelievable. I, I do too, um, for you. And he came home. home again today from work. I mean, it's just, yeah, well, you know, well, John, you and a pool, well, what's going to happen? I mean, it's just... We're going to be out till 11, 11. Well, I talked to the engineers uh, yesterday and today to, to push uh, the contractor, so... Uh, I'll, I'll call him again tomorrow. That was, yeah, because yeah, we had actually called Miranda and he said she was ill, and that's right. why we hadn't heard anything back. So that's why we thought you were. Uh, and one question I have for you: Your next door neighbor is, have you talked to her? Is she aware that this is going to start yes. soon? Yes. So she won't be surprised. No. No, she's no. expecting it. Okay. We're surprised it hasn't. Uh, I'll uh, <laughs> I'll make a point of calling you tomorrow. Okay. Probably in the afternoon, and I'll give you 
I'll talk to the contractor myself. Yeah, anything they can do to push it up. I would. Deep as you know, we've been trying to push it along. And I know. I know. I appreciate it. That's why I tried to call you tonight before the meeting. Right, right. No, I appreciate that. But you're always welcome to come and sit through our meetings. You know that. <laughs> All right. Thank you. That's why Thanks. I see we have a young lady in the audience, and I'll give you a chance to speak in a minute. And whatever. Are you here for a topic that's on the agenda? No. Um, okay. You don't mind waiting? Um, well, we'll, be, we'll be through our business uh, okay. real quick here. Uh, update on the county local road initiative. Uh, when you sat down tonight, I think the township clerk uh, placed a copy of a resolution, certified resolution, in front of you, indicating that uh, at last night's township board meeting, the township board did approve our recommended recommendation on the 2015 in 2016, Wayne County Local Partnering Initiative to repair our local roads in our neighborhoods. And so that was good news. I, I watched the meeting. I'm sure all of the others of you did too. Uh, exciting Monday night TV. But um, I think it was good. And I think uh, I think the, the key thing is we'll submit the plans for both years. My, my sense is Ted and Jim. But we, next spring, we can always take a, a, another look at 2016. Now, if we get better prices if, for the work in 2015, uh, we, you know, we, may, we might try to do more. That's kind of my thought. Because the engineers, uh, I ask them to make sure that the estimates, if anything, were on the high side. Uh, and uh, so that uh, we can always add work to it if we're falling under, based on the quantities of the work. But um, at any rate, so you want to comment? Both of you are on the township just, board. No, I just, you know, number one, happy that the board passed it. Uh, we had no problems with that. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the more we can do, the better. Obviously, there's a lot of work to be done on the island. And, uh, and this, this project, uh, the two-year project, won't, won't cover everything. So if we can get more in there, that's fine. Uh, the only comment I have is, again, seeing p the possibility of an opportunity uh, <clears throat> with a meeting of the supervisors and mayors of supervisors of the townships that were involved here, uh, it was noted that some of these communities are going to have difficulty raising the match. <clears throat> we fortunately, through our bond issue or through our village issue, are in an excellent position to go ahead and meet our match and take advantage of these funds. But I think it'd be great if, and I talked to Brian about this yesterday, if you put a little pressure on Wayne County and we can do the same, then if some of these communities do not meet their match and that money is funded and available, can we go after more of that money, again, allowing us to match with our our road funds and see if we can't make a little larger impact. So I don't know if they're going to do that. As you know, I'm pretty <clears throat> pessimistic about the ability to collect the funds in 2016. I think 2015 is locked in. Uh, but if that should go forward, and there's money that's in this account that aren't, isn't going to be used due to the inability to come up with community matches, then I think maybe an opportunity to see if we can't grab some of that too. Yeah, I think that's, Ted, that's a good point because uh, uh, from what I've read on the whole program, uh, the, you know, it's pretty much up to Wayne County's discretion to do whatever they want with the money that isn't claimed. So what, if we could claim it and it try it, I, yeah, sure, it's certainly worth it. Well, on the issue that you brought up about the others, uh, I think the largest townships are, one is Canton and the other is Redford. And I think they get a million and a half a year. So the issue before them is they not only have to come up with a million and a half a year as an outlay before they get reimbursed, but then they have to provide the 20% match on top of that, which is another $300,000. So they've got to come up with 1.8 million each year. And the whole question is when are they going to get paid back? So. Um, they're in a little bit different situation than we are. Right, it may be an opportunity. It probably might be squeezing blood out of a stone, but it's certainly worth giving it a shot. Yep. Okay, so that's good news that that was approved by the Township Board. Are there any uh, item number 10 on the agenda? Any discussion items? I have none. 
And before we get into the action items, uh, we do have some guests in the audience. One just arrived, so would it be all right if we move up the public comment? Sure. Uh, and we'll call on this young lady to come forward and state your name, please, and just your street and what your issue is. Good evening. My name is Linda Francitich, and I live on Senator McLean, and I've been resident here for about 20 years. And the purpose of my being here tonight is investigating drainage. And I have an issue with drainage, and I've had an issue since I've lived here, and Dale Rain's very familiar with my issue. And I've spoken with Linda, and she suggested that he came to this meeting. I had sent her a packet of pictures of the, one of the rainfalls, which was September 10th. And I have a tri-level, and I have a walkout lower level. I am lowest in my neighborhood and there's a drain that runs north-south from Park Lane all the way down to Bellevue. When it hits Bellevue, it goes east and then it dumps into, the, into Lake Erie. Are you familiar with the, it's a water course, natural water course? Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with that? I'm not. Wow. Well, um, Dale is. Dale has been a big help for 20 years almost since I've lived here. Actually, it's been 20 years, November 17th. And um, the first year I lived here, the water came through the water course and it went through my patio doors and it came in my house and there was about a foot of water in my patio door and it was all coming in. Of course, I had no insurance to cover that. So that was pretty devastating once the water receded and um, I got home to the township. The township said it wasn't ours. The county said it wasn't ours. It wasn't mine. It's news mine. Can't do nothing with it. So I went to Fishbones. I went to Wayne County. I went to Fishbones and, you know, the county records and pulled those. And it's, it's a public drain. And there's, it goes under culverts, under the streets. And where it goes to, I'm going to pass this picture. On Bellevue, there's a four-foot grate. It's about four feet tall. It's, anybody familiar with that? It's very big. It's very wide. It's pretty tall. I'll pass this picture around. Water collects. I'm sorry, debris collects at that site. So, when you have a bunch of sticks and logs and everything that's collecting all the way from Park Lane, traveling that far south, goes to Bellevue, the water can't drain. So it collects. And when it collects, it overflows. And when it overflows, it backs up. And when it backs up, it comes into my house. So, over the years, I have... Um, with my, some of my neighbors because they flood, their basements flood, I flood with real water coming in the house. We go to this site and we get rakes and we stand over this drain and we pull this water on our, this saw to bring on ourselves. Everyone on Bellevue floods, everyone on Woodside dry floods, and the people around the stream on Sunbrook rain floods. Dale has been incredibly helpful in, in, in understanding what's been going on and he'll send um, court workers. He used to. They're not available anymore. So the, he'll send private people up there and they've cut trees and they keep up with the debris. If they don't, we're all in trouble. I'm going to send you another picture through here of water when it's... I have this written. I'm a graphic designer so I can manipulate the pictures at least to give you captions. And you can see on here the look from the water ready to come in my house and then looking across my yard where the water's normally flat. Okay? And the people next door to me have small kids and I would find that probably would be dangerous. My kids are grown. But, you know, it's a problem for them as far as it pools in their backyard. Like these folks here, listening to these folks, it's you become anxious and panicked. Sure. 
when you know rain is coming, it's like because we can't control it. There's the insurance. You know, if you have insurance, it doesn't do a whole lot of good. Um, you learn a good use of totes, and you know, keep your stuff. You know, protect your stuff, but you can only do so much. Um, in my situation, what works for us is cleaning this, keeping the drainage clean. It's imperative. It's it's not even an option, but it's dangerous because we're standing over four feet of water, maybe four and a half feet of water. You're going to need to take a trip down there at some point and take a look at this. Mm-hmm. And it's dangerous for us to be standing over this and the liability for the city that can't be good for the township to be standing over that and taking a, a taking a rake and you're pulling it off and there's a I have a picture, I think one of the other pictures has a pile of the debris on there. And we have to clear that and free it. There was um, a really bad rain last year, and I, I changed phones, so I don't have the pictures anymore. Once we cleared that, the water receded in half an hour. But my neighbors who had just moved to the neighborhood right next door to me, it was too late for them. They had already lost their stuff. I had him hop in my car, don't really know him, and said, if I'm not here, you need to know what to do. He's, he didn't even know what was going on, except that he was in the middle of a mess. He said, you need to come with me. I need to show you what you can do to be proactive. And I brought him to the site, and I showed him this is what we do. So if I'm not here, and you don't see people there, and you feel it, that it's going to flood, and you see this water going, raising, you need to do something because no one's going to come out and do this for us. So, at least I'm making you aware of a situation that's been going on for 20 years. It's been going on a long time. If you talk to Dale Reum, and I know I've said that a number of times, he can fill you in on this. I talked to Lorinda. She suggested that I came here tonight. Here's, I'm bringing a suggestion to the table. Okay. When it rains, I would really suggest that you send your city workers or who, whoever you whoever you send I'm assuming some DPW worker to go and take a look at that drain and make sure there's no debris there and to to make sure that that, that grate is clear because it really is dangerous for us to be standing over there and to be taking care of this you know I don't want to say it's not our job I, I don't think that's even a factor it's somebody's job, it's our stuff. And I'm not gonna debate that in the middle of a flood. Sure. You know, it's you have to do something about it. So what I'm asking the township, besides sending somebody out there, my understanding and I could be wrong. There's dollars out there to take care of this somewhere. I don't know where. Yes. Whenever you're done I'll respond. Okay, great. Okay, I'm good. You're Thank done. you. You're done. Well, your Linda, your problem sounds very familiar to what the Albrights experienced, uh, and they live on West Road. Um, I've never heard of this before. If Mr. Rayom has assisted you over the years, uh, we have a drain fund. Uh, I don't know what the solution to your situation is. I haven't seen it, but when people come forward like this, we do look at it, and we'll we'll go study it. I'll <clears throat> we'll learn what we can about it and bring something back. Um, based on what you're describing to me, it sounds like a terrible situation. It is. So, uh, I don't know if there's a permanent solution. Sounds like this cleaning of the grate seems to be just a temporary, uh, frequent occurrence that you have to go through. I don't know, uh, I would assume there's difficult permanent solution, or Mr. Rayon might have suggested something already. But at any rate, I was not aware of it. Um, you say Lorinda uh, suggested you come here, and that's good. Has she been aware of it before? Did she? No. Indicate? Okay. No. So we'll we'll pursue this with Mr. Rayon. What I'd like to ask you to do is I, I need your phone number and your address. Okay. Written, uh, ri- don't give it over the phone or uh, on the podium. But if you could, John, have you got a piece of paper? Sure. If you could give it to John, I will. and uh, we will uh, this week start to look at it. Thank you. And somebody from this commission staff, it's one of us from the commission 
and staff will, will come out and talk to Dale and come out and meet with you Great. and take a look at it. I appreciate that. Thank okay? you very much. And I think the Albrights would indicate that we've been out to their house on weekends or whatever evenings to look at their situation. What you describe, uh, where the county has said first, you know, this is not our drain, they always say it's not our drain. <laughs> I hope you're not from the county. Uh, but they always say, uh, well, I don't even care if you're from the county, <laughs> but um, they always say it's not our drain. And of course, most communities say, well, we don't own the drains. It's a jurisdiction from the county drain commissioner. Or, uh, but nevertheless, we do try to solve the drain problems. So I can tell you that two years ago, we solved the problem over here at Rucker and Meridian, uh, and on that case, and I think the Albrights know this, we discovered the line that runs across the airport, the storm drain, was plugged. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't believe the debris we dug out of it, when, but that was a large project, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll get the Albrights problem alleviated. We'll look at yours. Um, going back on the Wayback Machine for a second, the first time this happened, it was a drain tile that had broken on Bellevue that created the first flood that happened to my house. So, um, a drain tile it, in the system, the public drain system? Yeah. yeah. So okay. I don't think Dale would know about that. It looks like I'm 20 years too late coming to this meeting. I should have came 20 years Well, you know, 20 years ago, uh, none of us were around on this commission, but I think our attitude is, uh, anybody else? Uh, anybody? <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Uh, John, do you have any history on Les? I don't have any questions, but I guess. Do you have any? Do, do, do. Go ahead, Les got a little input first. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I grew up with that green because I lived across the street. That's where I was raised. Uh, matter of fact, I fell in that green when I was a kid. <laughs> and it was cold. I remember that very well. <laughs> Anyhow, we have gone out there when I was working with the crew. Uh, we would go out there with a backhoe and we would take and pick up the debris or push the debris, debris down and clean it away from that grate. Now that thing, that grate, if that grate gets removed, is going to be a real problem because that is a drop that drops right down into the Bellevue sewer, which is a 36-inch sewer where it drops down into it. So I, I know in the past that they've gone out there with a backhoe and cleaned those debris out of there, but now they never replaced any of us and we're retired. We only have two people working in the field. So if John goes out there with a backhoe, he could clean the, clean the debris out of it. I know when we had Gary Jones working in our department, he would go out there with a backhoe and take all that stuff because Eddie Heineman would send him out there to do that. Is this a manhole that the grate? No, it's a big, huge steel grate that comes down like this, and it's bars that come down. And this sewer goes all the way from Bellevue over to, well, it did start on Ferry Road, and it comes all the way through those subdivisions, and it collects a lot of water. It always has for many years, even before Sunnybrook and Woodside were in there because it always used to flood. Where's the outlet, Les? Where's the outlet? outlet is that East River Road. That the, it goes into the Bellevue sewer, okay. which is that huge sewer that goes right out to the river. Okay, all right. All right, well... Can we take the grade away? Well, I don't know what the answer is. We, we, you couldn't because children or animals or somebody, it would be dangerous. So, it, I mean, it has to be there, but I'm sure there's something. Well, we'll look at the, uh, yeah. my, my thought is we look at the whole system and see what's going on there. Thank and you. Unless it's familiar, he'll be helpful, and we'll contact you, and you can show it to us. So if you leave your name and phone number, how we can reach you, we'll follow up. Les, is that I, we'll, we'll, we'll keep them. You want to keep those? It's right across yeah, we'll keep from 8th Street. Street. Thank you. It's right across from 8th Street. We'll see that John gets those. Uh, part of the old Wayne County drain that runs all the way through that. All yes. The way Are you familiar with this, Ted? Have you heard of this I'm before? I'm familiar with parts and pieces of it because over the years there's been several areas that have gotten blocked. Okay. Uh, but that is a Wayne County drain. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, when they did that clearing by the uh, public safety building, that actually runs right in through there, right? Eventually, yes. Yep. Okay. 
Okay, so. We are aware of it. We take care of it. There's been numerous times I've been at the Albright and said, hey, I got to go because I got to get over to that rain. So we continue to say, I mean, we can do it. And an hour later, when we have those heavy rainfalls, it's a beaver again. So that's, so that's not the answer. All right, well, we'll look, at, we'll look we'll into look it. it. We'll look at it. And you'll be hearing from us. Uh, okay. And uh, we have one more person in the audience who hasn't spoken yet. You're, no, they've already spoken. You're, you're welcome to come up and state your name and the street you live on. Good afternoon. I'm Alan Balaclip from 28655 South Point. I'm uh, one of the commissioners on the Bike and Pedestrian Commission. Oh, okay. And that's what brings me here tonight. Um, I'm not here to ask you to solve a problem. I'm here to actually give you guys a kudos. Um, recently, in the last two days, I received my reply back from the state. We applied for the Promoting Actives Community uh, Program. Uh, we received another bronze level. But one of the things I want to talk to you about is uh, they break down our award in three different uh, categories. One of them is built environments. Um, we did really well this year on it. We received 70.6% uh, of our possible points on that. And I just want to give you guys a kudos simply because that reflects on how you're maintaining our bike path. Um, you're taking care of it, you're, you're working hard. John and his guys bend over backwards to keep that our little jewel. They clean it, they maintain it, they take trees off of it, uh, they cut around it, they, they really make it look nice and we take that for granted, but a lot of work goes behind that. And I just want to come in and uh, give you guys a kudos. You're doing a great job. You, uh, you really made us look good in the PAC program. Um, I want to say special thanks to John Kine. He, he always drops what he's doing and comes running when we have a problem. Um, it's nice to have that kind of uh, support and, and camaraderie within the township. You know, working together, we're really starting to make uh, big strides in our community that uh, a lot of people don't see. But I want to draw to your attention that uh, without your support, the DPS support, we are... Uh, we are kind of spinning our wheels on the Bike and Pedestrian Commission because we have an infrastructure that has to be maintained and you guys are doing that for us. And I just want to stop by and say, great job, we're a great, uh, you know, a great community and, uh, because we have these kind of uh, programs. And uh, it's just nice. It's nice to, uh, to have it. it. It reflects well on us and uh, I think it's really taken effect in our community and, uh, and and moving us forward, uh, especially in this area of Down River where we're not seeing a lot of growth. We're doing a lot of great things that uh, aren't being done anywhere else. And we couldn't do it without you guys. I just want to say thanks a lot. Uh, keep up the work. I look forward to uh, expanding and improving our programs too. And we just could not do that without you guys there to support and maintain what we install. So. Uh, without your help, we couldn't do what we're doing. So I just want to say kudos to you guys and thanks a lot. And thanks especially to John. He's, he's been great, great help to us. Well, very good. Thanks again. Well, Alan, thanks. thank you. Um, I, I want, don't leave the podium yet. I think uh, I, I appreciate what you said and uh, uh, I think you're doing a good job as well. Your commission, new commission. Um, you. You're looking to the future, I guess, about where you can build more someday I hope we are. but one of the great assets our town has and if you look on any nice day people are out walking using strollers bicycling uh, people are using the walkways so that's very good um, I'll open it up for anybody who has any comments here uh, no, it's just uh, I just said uh, like to say thanks Al because uh, uh, you know we don't get that many people at the podium thanking mm -hmm. us <laughs> So thank you, and I, and I would like to thank John and Jerry uh, for the great job they do for a two-man two -man crew and plus the temporaries. So thank you, John. Any other comments from this side of the table? Uh, this side? Ted? Well, listen, uh, one comment I have is um, I, dr I walk and ride the bikes pass a lot. Uh, two years ago, was it two years ago? Not this summer, but the summer before we did a lot of crack sealing. Yes, you did. And uh, with your money, we, we, you did it actually. Well, I think Wally was deeply, Wally Posiask was deeply involved in that with the township manager and your chairman. But it seems to me that um, this year, coming up, this coming summer, we ought to look at a, what I would call a thick seal coat. It seems to me that some of the crack sealing has sunk a little bit. And um, if we really want to preserve what we have, 
I think we should try to come up with a thick seal coat, not just a one that's colorful, but one that'll fill in the little voids that might be. So it'll be, it'll be full two years after the work you did la in 2013. So that's just a thought I have, and I and I use them every Saturday and Sunday anyway, and other days when I'm around. Yeah, they, uh, I don't know if you, what your thought is on that. Well, you know, we uh, we look at that, and we thought that uh, we need that uh, the new path to bleed off a little bit, so we can adhere to it with a uh, nice top coat. And we have to pretty much let it set a year or two, and uh, get rid of all those top oils. And then uh, when we do apply a top coat, it it adheres and it, it stays. So we're not just ignoring it; it's it's all time oriented. So that we are looking at that, but like I say, we can't do any of that without you. You know, you guys step in and we work, uh, we coordinate between the commissions and we not only put it in, but we maintain it so it looks nice. Um, installing something is just a, it's just a piece of the pie, but the long-term uh, maintenance and, and uh, improvements on it um, have to be considered and we have to work together as commissions to do that. And uh, that's really why I'm here. I mean. Uh, it's easy to put it in, but to maintain it and make it look great 22 years after we started this project, that, that goes back to you guys. And I don't think the public really understands that how much behind the scenes... Um, well, that goes back to the staff. staff. Right, Alec. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. Staff and John, thank you. Absolutely. And, uh, we've got compliments. I was out at uh, Willow Park doing the 50-mile bike ride for my boys' Eagle Scout project. Um, I don't know why I did it. I wasn't getting a badge, but I did it anyways. And I talked to a couple of bicycle uh, riders at one of the uh, bathroom break areas. And they said that they came over here and rode. They were all active riders, and they were just enthralled by our bike path. So oh, good. Uh, we're getting a lot of positive feedback for it. And uh, I think it's, it's, a, it's a huge jewel we have here. Yes, it is. But then, I just like you said, I just want to say thanks for everything you guys uh really are supporting us. We come up with the idea, but you guys really implement it. Well, it's very nice of you to be here tonight, and we appreciate it. So okay, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Alan. Alex, I want to thank you for yes. your committee. Uh, excuse me, regarding your wood path chips? Yes. Or wood chip has I mean, mm -hmm. We got a ton of wood chips we we're looking to get rid of from the storm break. Okay. We are, uh, you know, we, we kind of break down our paths in two different areas. We have a hard path, which is our uh, asphalt path, and then we have the nature paths, or the more natural paths, which are walking paths with uh, wood chip on them, and that's what you're referring to. And I think uh, I think we've got the product. We just need the support to be able to get it and spread it. And uh, that might be a volunteer event we could uh, maybe organize and uh, speak with the uh, the other commissions and, and get it done. I mean, it's. That's all we know. There's not a lot of funding involved. It's just hard work at this point. So uh, if we could organize something, it would be great. And it goes a long ways. Everything we, go we do good in this township is usually based on uh, volunteers in many ways. So we just might as well apply that principle and see if we can get it done. I'm all for it. Well, thank you for all your volunteer help. Okay, thank you, guys. <laughs> okay, thanks. Hey, Al. Thanks, Al. Al? Yeah. That man right there is the one you can thank for the bike pass. Yes. Well, he was a township treasure. I, I remember, I've been here 25 plus years on the police department, and I remember when they started to implement the paths, um, one of the things I noticed is there was no activity for the young people on the island. It was very much an adult community because you had to drive to do anything. And uh, when they started to put those paths in, it was really a negative uh, project. The public didn't really want it. They didn't accept it. and you know, we were swimming against the current to get this in, and now I hear people talking about looking for houses that are close to the bike path. That's where they want to live. Mm. So the mindset has made a 180 degree turn, and we really have the public support, and it feels great. And uh, you can see the benefits. Um, people are socializing, they're exercising. Uh, the PAC program that we just finished is promoting active communities. And it's all about just being active out there. And we couldn't even start to compete in this unless we had this bike path. So uh, it's a building block process, and I think we're doing really well. Um, to look back, uh, I never would have guessed that it would have uh, rose to this level. But it, it sure, sure is nice to have it now. Well, thanks for being here, Alan. Okay, you guys take care. Thank you. Okay, move on to our action items, the uh, purchase of the dump truck. We have a report. 
Uh, and I, I'm glad that John Keim is here. Uh, the motion is to recommend to the Township Board to purchase one diesel Ford F550 chassis 4x4 dump truck with a, with a front end plow and salt attachment per the attached Gorno Ford quote dated September 24th, 2014 in the amount of $77,412. A little history on this is that we're proposing to purchase through the state of Michigan so-called My Deal Purchasing Program where we can take advantage of the state pricing for the truck, the chassis, uh, the bed, the front end plow, and the salt spreader. Uh, on page two or page 20 of your packet, you have a detailed uh, spec on the um, equipment. And John, I'd ask you to um, comment, describe what it is, a little more generic terms, and then we'll open up to questions. As you recall, last month we came to the commission asking for the larger truck, and we were directed to come back with a smaller version of that. This is that smaller version. This is an F550 versus a 750 with a smaller dump bed. And it's pretty much just a replacement for the vehicle that is no longer in service. We use a lot for these drainage projects that these people just approach you with. That's where we use the dump truck is over on Bellevue, cleaning out that drain. There's other drains throughout the township we go around and do the same thing, such as the Rucker drain, West River ramp drain. So that is used for that type of um, jobs as well as snow plowing, salting, all the township facilities. And it's currently budgeted as well. Yes, and I would note that the price that you've come back with is less than half of what we actually budgeted for the purchase of a truck this year. So uh, we'll open it up to questions. Are there other questions? Uh, what was the price tag of the first one came back? The first one was 127. 127. Yep. Thanks. And we budgeted 180. Originally, the very first truck that we looked at was 169, which was the what we refer to as a county truck. And this is uh, you're able to actually plow snow with us if you want to. Correct. Okay. Any questions from this side of the table? This side of the table. What are you going to do with the old one? Put it out to auction. They're not going to give it away. No. Put it out for auction. Ted, any questions? All right. Everybody's had a chance to look at this. Um, can I have a motion? I make a motion we recommend that the Township Board to purchase this vehicle. Support. Moon supported that the Township, uh, that this Commission recommended the Township Board that we do purchase the Ford Diesel 5 F550 with a 4x4 dump truck and plow and salt attachment for $77,412. Any further comments? If not, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. The motion is approved. Just got an automatic transmission or standard shift? Automatic. Just to let you know, Les, I also uh, looked at the safety yellow like you requested. It would have to come from the factory like that. It, it would be $750, and the earliest delivery date would have been February. What color is this? White. Never see it in a snowstorm. That's what we have the amber lights for, we hope. All right. The... Um, Next item Thank you. is the wastewater treatment land, plant lighting. You. And uh, you have a long report here, but I'm going to recommend that, I want to make a couple comments and recommend that you table this again. Uh, what's, uh, and whoever been involved can speak up on this, but what's transpired since our last meeting is um, one of our ex-officio member, uh, our township treasurer, Ted, has uh, been, in, been in the uh, HVAC and mechanical engineering business and uh, we all thought that the, we were a little taken back by the price uh, $90,000 range so we tabled it at our last meeting as you know and we were going to take a, as the minutes indicate a deeper look at the difference between the materials and the labor cost so making an inquiry on this number one um, uh, it turns out that the contractor says that in the materials cost, he's got, there's a lot more than just the fixtures, but there's uh, uh, switches, there's a, a fixture, appendages to uh, attach them. Uh, he had his bond and insurance covered in that, the permits covered in that, um, and a sundry of other costs. So, um, so that's one issue. 
another issue is, so it's not a clean deal to say, you know, what if, so, so the next issue was, um, and there was an inquiry made as to whether or not what the cost of the fixtures would be if we bought them directly, knowing that all contractors would mark something up. And it appears that there might be a substantial savings if we could do that. Uh, the fixtures themselves, I think, uh, were, we don't know an exact figure, but I'll let you comment the on that. The fixtures came in at 48,000, the sundry hanging, uh, like hanging kits and uh, switches came in at about another total of five. So we're probably looking at uh, 53,000 if we purchased it ourselves. For the, and what was shown in the material side was about 77,000. That's uh, correct. But that's not a true 77 according to the contractor of, uh, of just the materials. And so the bottom line is after a lot of discussion on this, going back and forth with the contractor, um, the contractor was asked initially if he would split out, just hold his price on the labor, and then he brought up that all these other things were in it. Uh, what, the way, way it, th through discussions today, what I got involved and proposed to the contractor that uh, would he be willing to sit down and meet with myself and Ted and our engineers uh, and he's going to let me know whether he would be tomorrow. He's going to let me know whether he would be willing to sit down with us and see if we can uh, talk about the township purchasing the equipment that's needed or the majority of the equipment that's needed and then letting him come back with what his price would be to see what kind of savings we might be able to make on this. Realistically, you know, I'm going to guess you, we could be looking at saving the 5000 to 10000 maybe. I don't know. But I think it's, if we can save some money, we should try to do it. So with that, I'll, I'll offer to be stand, uh, stand corrected. Did, any, uh, did I misstate anything, Ted? No. No. Uh, and as I said to you on the telephone today, <clears throat> I didn't bring this forward to raise objections, but to educate. Uh, when I saw the cost and we went out to look at the cost, I was, I was a contractor for a lot of years. And <clears throat> there's very little warranty involved on these. They're all manufacturer warranty. All the stuff is manufacturer warranty. Uh, installation, obviously, is warranty. If you turn the light switch on, the lights come on, it's done. That's the end of that warranty. Uh, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> bonding is not an issue, I wouldn't think, as far as excessive cost. I think your estimate of saving five to seven is low. I think 15 to 18 would probably be more realistic. However, we may, you guys, you as a commission may not want to do that. I, I don't know. I, I just, the only reason I did what I did was to educate. So you know what we're looking at. I just thought a $20,000 markup on material was a lot. And again, I don't know if you can really say that, I mean, we need to talk to the contractor and have him explain it before we say that it's uh, $20,000 because he told the engineers that it wasn't, that there were these other costs. But we have to find out what they are, realistically. Well, it's like I said, yeah. it's, it's, I'm trying to educate. Whatever you guys decide, of course, we'll take forward to the board. But, yeah, I, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I certainly think it's worth looking into whether it's 5000 or 15000 It's Either one is worth it if we can save that kind of money. Uh, we, the reason this was uh, tabled last time was because we thought the price was high and we didn't have a breakdown. So we really didn't know what we were looking at. We had a lump sum figure. Uh, so it's well worth, uh, I think, tabling this action again uh, at this time until we know. Well, you know, and I've been uh, around too, and I, from talking with a contractor. I think that part of his no doubt profit was buried in the, the, no doubt. the uh, uh, roll up costs from the purchase of the equipment. And that's pretty typical of what contractors do. And of course, a contractor's got to make money. Yep. And I'm not going to say he wouldn't do this, but one thing we thought about was, well, should we go out and rebid it real quickly? And with the idea that we would purchase the equipment and just rebid the labor to install, and there's a good chance if we did that, the contractor may not bid on it. 
Um, but at any rate, we don't, I don't know the answer to that either. So we're just speculating here. Joe, this involves your plan. My, my feeling on it is I'm not going to let this linger. We need to make a decision. And to the commission, I would say one way or the other. If we have a problem with moving forward, I'm going to ask for a special 10-minute meeting sometime to deal with it. If we can negotiate something, I'm going to ask for a special meeting so we can move that forward too. I don't know that we can get something done in time for the next township board meeting, which is two weeks from last night. Uh, if we can't, we can't. If we can, uh, but I, I certainly don't want this to linger anymore. It's already a whole month has lapsed without accomplishing anything, and I'm not happy about that. So, do you have anything to add to this, Joe, at this point? Okay. Well, uh, I have a question for Joe. How's the lighting operational right now? There's two lights. That's a very question, John. All right, so that's, that's a factor that has to be filtered into this analysis process. Well, I think it has been, John. That's what the, the way this bill is said. We need to act on this as quickly as possible. If we have to have a special meeting, we'll have a special meeting one way or another, whether it's to, to accept a bid or to do something different, it has to be worked on as quickly as possible because uh, as we, when we went through there, I, there were, I think there were only a couple of lights, it's dim, it, it's not good. Uh, so yeah, we have, to, we have to work on it quickly, but at the same token, uh, we don't want to be taken, taken advantage of. So uh, I think it's worth looking at, but working on it as quickly as possible. Well, in, you know, in fairness, uh, we're on public record here. We, we, we got a legitimate bid on what we requested. There were two bids, and they were within $7,000 of each other. So I think we were all shocked at the $90,000 price tag. So uh, we'll see what we can do about that. So I'd, I'd like to uh, ask for a motion to table the issue uh, to our next meeting with the idea that we will work diligently to come back with something I'll make that motion. by that day. I, and I will support that. And also we should look into the cost of the fixtures and see about uh, how much of our municipal discount we get on purchasing these things. And the sales tax, see if that's involved too. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We can save some time. Because we don't, when we purchase this, we don't pay taxes. When the contractor purchases, he's got to pay taxes on that. That's not true. If he has a state sales tax license, he does not. Make, he does not have to pay taxes. He only pays the only time if you have a state sales tax license, which all contractors do. If you purchase something, you're tax exempt. If you sell something and charge tax, you're now obligated as an agent for the state to give them that tax. You can't keep it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, we have a motion. Is there a support? I support it. Okay. All, any further discussion? All in favor and keep it saying aye. 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 Um, opposition? Motion carried. In your packet, um, uh, as, a, as an item, let's see. There's no public left. So on the chairman's report, um, we, I had attached a copy of the brochure I received from the city of Southfield on their street improvement program that they're moving forward with uh, for a vote on November 4th of this year. It's for a $99 million bond issue to be spread over 10 years. In their case, uh, what they're probably going to do, and that would cost 2.58 mills to the average taxpayer, it was about um, four years ago in the middle of the economic recession to fund their police and fire departments. They asked voters to approve five mills, which the voters by some 70% margin approved. And, and so they're moving forward with this proposition. And uh, I would tell you that in their case, some of the roads scheduled for improvement include some county roads. Uh, what I think they're probably going to do, talking with the city, is if they get this approved, probably in the first year, they'll issue orders of 25 to 30 million in bonds. And then the idea was to spread the rest out over a number of years. But they need to get it. Their roads are, they have many roads in terrible condition. So that's for your information. So we're not the only ones. 
If you go on the Farmington Hills website, City of Farmington Hills, we're asking voters for two mills for road improvements. And um, so, and there are no doubt many other communities in the same boat. One, for, one community I'm familiar with, or two townships I'm familiar with, one is uh, Silent Township out in the Ann Arbor area, the other is Raisin Township next to Adrian. South Townships has, they've levied a special assessment for roads at $85 per parcel. Uh, they started that a couple years ago, which raises uh, about $500,000 a year for road improvements. And Raisin Township, a much smaller township, 6,000 population, just approved $95 special assessment for per parcel. And um, that will raise about $350,000 a year to help with their, they're in Lenaway County, fix their roads. Yeah. I'm familiar with the little village of Chesney up by north of Flint that has a, an SEV of about $400,000 tax roll value. Uh, I'm sorry, it must be $4 million, $40 million, $40 million. So when they levy one mill, they raise $40,000. So they've had, they're going to ask voters for approval of five mills so they can raise 200000 a year for 10 years to fix roads. Everything's relative, I guess, right? So, anyway, uh, final thing is, is not so good news, I guess. That's a wonderful job. I just got this uh, uh, yesterday. <clears throat> well, I got it yesterday because I was out of town. This is correspondence from our contractor, um, our chip sale contractor's subcontractor, which is Al's Asphalt. Now, we do have a letter. The township manager has a letter from um, Highway Maintenance, which is our chip sale contractor, stating that by next summer, July 15th, he will complete all of the chip sale. Uh, we had hoped, if you remember, we, we talked about it was sort of like glass being half full or glass half empty, six of one, half dozen of another, about getting the repairs done this year with the hope they won't get any worse. So yeah. this was given last Friday uh, by Al's Asphalt. I just wanted to give you an update as to where we are with the milling and paving portion of the project. Unfortunately, due to postponed weather and rain last week, while that change was unfortunate, it did, wind, it did wind up working out since it rained Tuesday. I'm, I'm more than a little concerned at this point trying to orchestrate this operation when the weather is best unreliable. Given that the fact that Wayne County will be involved, now this is a critical thing, the fact that Wayne County will be involved, I feel at this time it would be best to postpone the entire project till spring. I can get this going right in the beginning of May. We'll have more reliable weather when time is back on our side. Um, so at any rate, what he's saying is he doesn't want to do it this year. Now, the problem with Wayne County is that he's got to give them 48 hours notice so they can get an inspector on the job. And he might, the weather forecast might be suitable and he's going to give it and then if, uh, if it rains, he's got to change the schedule. Then he's got to give them another 48 hours notice. So I guess... Um, I'm, I'm tired of dreaming about this. Nothing I can do. I guess we're all just going to suffer the disappointment. Correct? Fun little thing to tell. This brochure from the city of South, it was quite nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, since we do apparently have time on our hands now, I think it might be a good idea if you or us or everybody sees things of this nature to collect them. So it'll help them with us putting together a mailer for our residents also. I am, Ron, and I'm glad you thought that. Uh, if you go on, the, I'm sorry to mention the City of Farm Hills website. They have a nice one on their website. Mm -hmm. And also, um, so we will collect those. And I just want to tell you also that at least it's my plan, and I talked to Dale Rayon, the township manager, today. Uh, we're scheduled to go back to the township board, uh, what, the 27th? Next a week from 20. yesterday, yeah, the 27th, yep. And on their agenda will be uh, uh, the issue of our long-term road and water main plan. And I would hope that several members of the commission could be there with me 
and um, we're not going to make a presentation. We already did, but uh, talking with the township manager, I've asked if he could move it forward to them to get it back to the township board to request that they uh, endorse or support at this point uh, conceptually our plan uh, or, or make comments or suggestions or let us know if they're not going to support it. And um, what we'd like to do then is get enough support so we could move forward with it so that as soon as the election's over, we can move forward and present the issue to the county with a request that by a date certain, uh, March 15th of next year, they give us feedback. We have to get approval on the road issues. And, and the approval has to be, for example, uh, they have to give us some indication that it will be possible, not a promise, but possible, that we could get the federal dollars that we programmed, we're talking about the years 2017, 2018, that they will commit uh, a million dollars in each of those years to uh, Meridian and to East River and so forth to us. And that they will approve our plan for Church Road without making us do a lot more, for Ferry without making us do a lot more, and to rebuild West Road in place. That's what we want to ask them for. There's probably some things I've forgotten. But we have to go to the county and ask for all these things before we can say we have a plan that that works. Anybody got a question about that? Am I making sense? So, uh, that's going to be on Monday the 27th. And um, I would hope that several of you commissioners would be able to join with me at the meeting. I'll join you, Bill. I know you will. I'm dead well. <laughs> Last, sir. If anybody's in town, I'd like to ask you to be there. And, and I, as chairman, I have nothing else to add to this meeting tonight. So, um, I, I guess I should say one other thing, if I can. Uh, I got a, I got a, through my, my company, I got a copy of a memo from Michigan Department of Transportation. And um, it's uh, regarding Act 51, which is the Federal Highway Act, and where all the money is distributed to cities, uh, MDOT and the counties. And what it talks about is, is that the state uh, of Michigan legislature approved $144 million to be distributed to uh, uh, the general road fund for the state uh, under the general formula. And so the formula is that 39% of the money is distributed to MDOT. 39% goes to all the county road commissions, and 22% goes to all the cities and villages. So the breakdown is, when you do all that, after MDOT takes 39% of the money, all the counties split 39%, which is $56 million, and Wayne County, second largest distribution, is $5,390,000 that Wayne County will get. They're going to get it over the next four quarters. They're not going to get it in one lump sum, so they get it in four quarters. Oakland County is the first. I'm just telling you this because I thought you'd be interested. It gets the most, which is 5700000 So Wayne County gets 5390000 um And just to give you an idea uh, of what some communities, if you take um, our population of 10,000, I would assume Adrian is close in population to that figure, uh, they get 118,000 back. So if we were a city out of this distribution, we get close to 118,000, dollars back. That's just my uh, guess. Uh, Detroit gets $4.8 million back. Dearborn, 581,000. So it just gives you an idea uh, of what some of the communities get. Um, so. That's how quick the money goes. 144 million, bingo, it's distributed. So Wayne County gets $5 million. So. Easy come, easy go. Easy yeah. come, easy go. All right, so with that, uh, I have nothing further. We'll go around the table for commissioner's reports. Jim? I have nothing tonight, thank you. Ron? Nothing tonight. Good meeting. Nothing tonight. Jim? Jim? John? Well, I just quickly, Mary Phillips, we are very sorry for you. Yeah. And, and that's it. Phil? No. Less. On a 6 o'clock news tonight, 
they were interviewing some people in the city of Royal Oak, and they are going out for 2.5 mils for their road improvement. Oh, are they? I didn't know that. It was on the news at 6 o'clock on Channel 4. 2.5 mils. And I, I, I had a telephone call during that time, and I didn't hear the whole story, but I think it's for two years. I might be wrong. Uh, I know they're going for 2.5, and it's strictly for their road improvements. Well, we'll check it out. That'll be on the website, that's for sure. That's all I got. Well, Ted. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'm making hey, a motion. I'm sorry, so, John. A few little updates for you guys. Okay. Uh, the pressure reducing valve installation project is getting started next Monday. We approved that earlier this year. Yep. The yep. whole bridge line, the 16th line. So uh, on Monday the 20th, as long as DWSD, the Water and Sewer Department, uh, can cooperate with us, we're going to shut that 16 inch line down and make sure that the isolation valves hold and flush that line real good at that end and leave it off for one week. The contractor wants to start on the 27th. And that gives us a week to take care of anything that might come up. And we're going to have a lot of rusty water complaints, just so everybody knows out there. We're going to make as much contact with the public as we can to help them realize that. And so, like I said, he'll start on the 27th. He thinks two to three days we'll be back in service. So we're hoping the 29th will be back online. Uh, also, we've started our flushing and hydro maintenance and winterization program. So you're going to see some rusty water from that. Right now, we're working from Parkway South. And then once we get all the way to the south end, we'll turn in and go north from Parkway North. And let's see, uh, we're going to do a, starting on some road repairs on Marquette. Should be, it's supposed to start at the end of this week, but with this rain, it may be delayed till the beginning of next week. Okay. Get into Marquette. Uh, just uh, just uh, off East Lowry. Yeah, just east yeah. off of Lowry. Lowry. Yeah. And then also, um, today at the um, Down River uh, Public Works Director's meeting, it was brought up that we are about to sign a contract for salt procurement. Earlier in the season, it looked like there was going to be at least a 50% increase in the price of salt. They were able to negotiate it down. There was actually only about a six-tenths of a percent increase. So it went to 50.71 a ton instead of 90, which they were projecting. What was it? It was 47.56 47 last year. It went up to 50.71 this year. So that's about a 6% increase. Right. Increase. Yes. But they are better than the 50% yes, they were projecting. Yeah, you said six tenths of a percent. Yeah, I'm sorry. Six percent, okay. okay. All right. And we get ourselves from Trenton, so we're on board with them. Everything's good. Good. And that's all I have. Tell you anything, Ed? No. I make a motion. I second. That we adjourn. <laughs> Thank you. Is there support? Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.